I'm Tabby and uh, I'm from the Royal Common Hospital. I'm a practice development nurse um, for child health down in Cornwall. I've got a horrible snotty cold, cold so I apologise if I start <laughs> coughing and sneezing halfway through. Um, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, our project that we did and we um, came to Penna with um, and then a little bit about what I've done since and what we're on to now and our next kind of steps. Um, and if anybody's got any questions, they're very welcome. So we had uh, some pick a survey results that said um, we didn't have much feedback from our 8 to 10 year olds. We had lots of feedback from parents of babies and lots of feedback from our maternity patients and lots of feedback from our teenagers. That's normally food that teenagers like to feed back on. Um, but we, we were kind of missing feedback from our 8 to 10 year olds. So we decided that we would take part in National Takeover Day, which is a children's commissioner project. And uh, we thought, do you know what? Why don't we get a group of eight to 10 year olds and bring them into the hospital for the day? So the idea of Takeover Day, for anybody who's not done it or doesn't know about it, is that um, you get some kids in and they take over your place and make high level decisions and can kind of be bosses for the day which is great, uh, but it, it can be a little bit tricky as well. So uh, we had to really, really, really meticulously plan stuff because kids are kept really busy at school, so we didn't want them to be bored. We factored in going into the playground, having a break. They had a VIP table in the canteen at lunchtime, which we thought was great. Um, so we did lots of planning, finding a school, uh, finding just 8 to 10 kids. Uh, we wanted a group of 10 8 to 10 year olds. One school wanted to send 33 kids. That was a little bit too much, so we had to find the right school. Um, we had to get really explicit consent because we wanted to share what we were doing and really raise our profile. Um, anybody that's ever been to Cornwall will know that the Royal Cornwall Hospital is a very, very big hospital and the children's part of it is relatively small. Um, some people like to even forget that there's children there. Um, so in Peter we like to do quite a bit of shouting about the fact that all the children are up on the fifth floor of the tower block. So we wanted to really kind of raise our profile within the trust. So I wanted really explicit consent about sharing pictures on social media, sharing pictures across the whole trust. So that was quite tricky getting very explicit consent from the families in the school. Uh, and we kind of decided on four topics for the day. We wanted a feedback wall. We have these things called wonder walls at the Royal Cornwall. I don't know if anybody else has got a wonder wall. It's basically like a big uh, kind of screen on the wall that people can put feedback on. So as you're walking out of the hospital, you can write a comment and whack it on the wall. But they're all a bit boring. So we wanted a fancy one for paediatrics. Um, we really wanted help with our survey design so that we could engage more 8 to 10 year olds. Um, we thought we'd throw in a hand washing audit as well, just to really scare the staff. Um, and we gave them a little unit tour as well, which was tricky because you can't plan for that because you don't know who your inpatients are. So on that day, we did actually have a tier four CAMS patient who fractured her clavicle on the ward um, during the visit. So there was me kind of trotting ahead of the children to make sure that every area was safe and getting consent of our inpatients at the time because you can't plan for your inpatients. Um, but it was all fine. We stayed away from the adolescent unit in the end and just made our way around everywhere else. So that all worked out fine. Uh, so this is some of the stuff we got up to. We got lots of glitter and lots of paint for the Wonderwall design stuff. And the kids ended up having a little bit of an art lesson, really, with some of our play team. Um, this was the hand washing audit. Uh, eight to ten year olds don't believe in a no blame culture. And there was lots of, it was that one, Tabby, that nurse there, her, she didn't wash her hands properly. She didn't do her nails. She didn't do her nails, we saw it. So they like, uh, they like to blame, uh, which was really good. Um, and we did a bit of sim training with them. One of our consultants came in and did some sim training. I'd left a little section of the timetable clear because I knew that we weren't sure what was going to be going on across the floor that day. And luckily uh, we managed to get Chris, one of our paediatricians, in to do a bit of sim training. And they met uh, quite high level people. This is our matron, Mel. This is our director of nursing, Mary. And the deal was you can ask any question you like um, as long as it's kind. So 
who we're not we're not allowed to be mean to anybody, but we've got we can ask whatever questions you like. So the most popular question of the day was, uh, are you depressed? They were really obsessed with asking stuff about that. And they were quite um, they were quite so only one person said yes. <laughs> um, they were quite surprised that most of us are happy in our work. I think they thought it was going to be a really sad place. Interestingly, lots of them had never been to a hospital before. This was their first visit. So we had a real kind of range of kids. Some children were complex needs patients. Some children had been in a lot. But I would say six out of the ten had never, ever been in a hospital before. So I think they were thinking it might be horrible. They were quite surprised that we were all hideously depressed. Um, so a couple of the highlights from the day, really, for me, um, was that you shouldn't anticipate what children want. Because uh, I thought if we gave them free reign, they would want a skate park and cinemas. And when we looked at our kind of survey design, what they really want is, is simplicity. So, sorry if you can't now shout louder. Um, what they really, really wanted was nice, yummy food, which I was just talking to you guys about. Um, and they really want doctors to talk to them in a way that they understand. And they wanted a comfy bed. And they wanted a uh, partnership. What, what they really wanted from staff, there was an expectation that staff would spend time with them. They thought that if you're an eight to 10 year old in hospital, mm -hmm. it would be really nice if the nurses were a companion. And that made me feel a little bit sad because I can't remember the last time I had any length of time to actually sit and just chat with my patients. Um, and probably the most poignant moment of the day was uh, we were approaching the paediatric assessment unit, which is where we bring our acute admissions in. We'll triage them if they're not too sick. Obviously, if they're too sick, they go to ED. Um, we'll triage them and then we'll see them and then we'll decide whether or not they're going to stay. And there was a, a new family in with their newborn baby, who I think probably had bronchiolitis. Um, and one of the little boys said, I said, have you got any questions? One of the little boys just looked at the family and said, are you frightened? Um, and the mum and dad kind of just stopped and looked at him and went, yeah, do you know what? We, we're really frightened, but we know we're in the best place. And I kind of got a bit of goosebumps because I thought, do you know what? Sometimes we forget to ask those really simple questions. So that was a real turning point for me on the day. I felt like that was such a gem. Um, and I've been doing quite a lot of work on getting our junior doctors when they're clerking to ask parents how they feel. We ask a lot about what's going on with the baby, what's going on with the child, what's the history, but we don't really ask the parents outright brave conversations. Are you frightened? Um, but a 10 year old boy did it straight away. First thing that came to his head was to ask them if they were frightened. Um, so I think what was really important for me was that we actually really listened to them. There's no point going to all that hassle of getting the kids into your hospital, letting them have free reign, and then not doing what they suggested, because I thought that would be really disrespectful to them. Um, so we now have a wonder wall that they designed in full use. We had a grand opening day. We had cake in the corridor. We had juice. Um, and all their parents came in to see it and we cut a red ribbon and they were very excited. Um, we've changed our survey to re reflect their top themes. So is your bed comfy? Do the doctors speak directly to you? So we've changed our surveys. Um, and one of the big things that the children felt on the day was that our observations unit was quite frightening. They didn't like the equipment. They said that it was a, a bit scary and they felt that that was the place that needed the most help. So we, um, we invited another set of children in, we are mad, on the hottest day of the summer last year and did a video of a tour that kids can have a look at when they come in. So it's a video by children for children. Um, but I think part of what was really brilliant about that day is that when you work with kids, you get to step into their world for the day. You're always asking them which is their favourite Peppa Pig character or who they like out of Harry Potter. And this kind of um, became our, our quote, really, and our mantra when we were doing our, when we do all of our patient experience stuff, um, which was what we were talking about at the Penn Awards when we said, uh, a child's voice, however honest and true, is meaningless to those who've forgotten how to listen. And we really tried to kind of embed that in all of our stuff that we're doing and all of our improvements, because if you're going to ask for their opinion, 
you kind of have to listen. <laughs> um, so we made the video that, that we came up with the idea. This was a second school that came in. That's their head teacher. She's really cross at me for that picture. But, um, <laughs> so this is a sensory tour and it's downloaded onto iPads. So when the kids and their parents are waiting to be seen in paediatric admissions, which can sometimes be quite a lengthy wait, depending on how busy they are, they can watch the video and they can have a little sensory tour around the unit, which is really brilliant. So they all quite like that. Um, and uh, this is Maddie. I just wanted to tell you a little about Maddie. Maddie came on our takeover day. Uh, Maddie is one of our long-term patients. She's always in and out of our wards. Um, and really, really sadly, she was too poorly <coughs> to come back for the grand opening. So part of the kind of things that I was talking about on the day is that you have, we had to be quite fluid and change things and be quite flexible. So because she couldn't come on the day, we decided to FaceTime her. So her TA came and we FaceTimed her um, at the opening. So this is Maddie on FaceTime. Uh, and this is the rest of the kids talking to Maddie on FaceTime, um, showing her the grand opening. And then we dropped off some cake and some gifts for her at the school afterwards. So although she wasn't well enough to be there on the day, um, she's now, because she loved it so much, she's now working on some um, did not attend stuff. We've got quite a high rate of people who aren't brought to their outpatients appointments and it costs us a fortune. So Maddie drew us this lovely picture of a doctor with their feet up on the table. <laughs> Which, do you know what, the doctors didn't like it? I don't know why, they were really grumpy about it. And they said, oh, I don't think we should have that picture. And I said, a child's voice, however honest and true. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in there, we printed it, we printed it. Don't ask a child if you don't want to hear what they've got to say. Um, so Maddie's done loads of work with us uh, since, which is great. She's become a bit of an ambassador for patient experience within the trust. When she's well enough, we, again, you have to be flexible. Sometimes she's not up to it. Sometimes she's sick of hospitals and hates us all. Sometimes she's feeling in the mood, so we, we do it when we can. Um, so since the, the Penn Awards, we've, um, we've got our kind of fully fledged Wonder Wall. These are magnets um, that the younger kids can take off and play in. It's a serve scene and you can change the sunshine while you're, while you're writing your feedback. Mm -hmm. um, this is the school that did the video for us. So me and Dr Chris went to the school and they had a celebration assembly about it and we talked about nursing and medicine and celebrated their video and all the parents got to see it. And it was one of the first times the parents from that school had seen the video and they were all quite moved, so it was lovely. Um, so if anybody's thinking they might be stupid enough or brave enough to get a load of kids in, um, these are kind of our top tips. Um, make sure you get consent, plan ahead what you can, try and be flexible on the day. Hospital ID badges evaluated really well. They have their own badges and they were allowed to ch choose their job description for the day. <laughs> so they loved that. Uh, try and really listen. And remember, different children will have had different personal experiences. So you do have to just kind of tread carefully in some cases. Um, so since then, we've been up to um, quite a bit on... We've been working on a quality improvement project. Um, and I don't know if you guys have ever done anything called QUIPS. Do you guys have quips? Yeah, if you're not. So that was new to me. I don't know if anybody's ever done that as part of their project. It's quality improvement patient partner panels. Um, it's very exciting. So I'm working on a deteriorating patient project. Um, and I went in front of a quips panel, which is where you get expert patients that give you their feedback on your presentation. So. It's quite scary. It looks a bit like this. That's me in the kitchen looking a bit worried because you have to present your project. But all of these guys are actually expert patients and you present your work to them and they will give you their feedback. But it's really structured and this guy, Jono, he's from our Academic Health Science Network. He will make sure nobody speaks over each other, make sure nobody, you know, kind of goes off on a tangent. Um, this lady, Narina, she went off and got a glass of wine halfway through. I thought, this is a lady I can work with. Um, this lady here, they, they, they're all patients, but they've all got a background in quality improvement. It was hilarious when she did that. Everyone else was like, oh no. 
but they gave me so much real good quality feedback on my project. And one of the things I've been working on, just the last thing I wanted to share with you was, um, we're not very good at picking up when parents are really worried and they're not telling us because they don't feel brave enough to. So some of you might have seen this, the Smiley Faces pain assessment that we use in children all the time. Uh, we're trying to come up with a how concerned are you version of that. So just a quick flash of, look, as you're coming through the door, how worried about you, how worried are you about your child right now? Just to kind of gauge that um, from parents because particularly our junior medical staff and a lot of our junior nursing staff aren't that kind of brave to have those conversations. So that's something that I'm working on as a result of the patient partner panel. Slightly scary, but brilliant experience. So that's a little bit of what we've been up to.